This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies, or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend Musculoskeletal Pain and Injury on Wednesday, November 2nd at 7 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. Dr. Tom Rosell Live, right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live in studio, waiting to take your phone calls and any subject that you want to talk about that relates to your health. Perhaps you've tried, you've applied, and you've done, you know, everything you can think of and come up with the same old, same old, nothing that really works. Well, let's kind of turn that around and put a little different look on it, put you on a path that might actually produce some results that are permanent. Call me, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. I'd love to talk to you. And, you know, I'm going to talk to you about a lot of different things today. I have things on my mind, and, you know, I read all the time, and then there's certain things that kind of trigger other things, and you're the beneficiary of all that. So what we're going to talk about today is headaches, and we may talk about concussions as we go through. We may talk a little bit about seizure patterns, and because that's where my head's been the last few days, and some really interesting articles that have come out that I think that you need to know about. Um, you know, as we go through our daily lives, and we look at the impact of our health, the short term, the middle term, and kind of the long term, the immediacy takes over because we're driven by acute situations, and you know, when we can't function, when we can't think, then we have a huge problem. We're talking about headaches of any sort. You know, migraine headaches, uh, everybody thinks that they have a migraine, but migraine is very specific when it comes to its presentation and what it is. And we're going to touch upon that a little bit today. You need to really know. So, but I want you to know something about headaches. You know, it's, it's estimated that something in the neighborhood of about 3 million women suffer from migraine headaches, and just slightly under 1 million men suffer from migraine-like headaches. Why is there such a differentiation? Well, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the fix and actually how you can get rid of these things permanently and forever. It's it's not hard when you understand the mechanism of what these things really are. you know. But only half of these sufferers you know, have been really adequately diagnosed, and that's the problem. And you know, despite that, you know, and despite really understanding the why behind things, they get a prescription. They're, you know, take this, you know, and call me in the morning, right, type of thing, except take this and call me a year or two or 10 years down the line, and maybe, you know, you'll, they'll go away or whatever, whatever, right? So the the, the inadequate uh, diagnosed, diagnostics lends itself to permanent prescription, meaning permanent medication. You know, you may have to stay on these for the rest of your life. How many of you have ever heard that from your physician? Well, you know, we're not sure, but we know this will control it. And so why don't you just take this? And if we have to, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see what else we have to push you on. It's not okay for any of you. It's certainly not okay from where I stand and looking at patients that come in with this type of malady. So we're talking about migraines and the differentiation, but the, the migraine, like the economic costs, is huge, and this is what I want you to understand. Economic costs, and we're talking about hospital admissions and diagnostics and therapies and so forth. You know, while the most important impact is to your pocket, you know, they're related 
also to loss of work days and reduction of time spent working during the day because you can't think, your head's not clear and focused, you're not present, and you can't be expected to do your work the way you're supposed to. So three quarters of migraine sufferers have, you know, to temporarily stop their normal work activity, and they have to leave work altogether because they've got a headache. You know, my head's killing me. It's, it's going to explode. It's coming off the top of my head. Well, in the United States alone, just in the U.S. alone, the annual cost of migraine is estimated to be somewhere up to about 18 and a half to 19 billion. That's where it be billion dollars in lost work productivity. And then if we take it across the border, you know, into Canada, our neighbors up through there, you know, the the migraine in the workplace is 500 million annually, and that's just in Ontario. That's just the one province of Ontario. So it's crazy. This is this is a, a, an economic loss and impact that is so significant that if we could just get a handle on this, we would be amazingly economically in a better place. So let me tell you about something personal. You know, all of you have listened to me. We've got, you know, just on terrestrial radio right now, we've got about 28,000 of you listening to this program. And that's not including everybody that's getting us online and that listens to this later on on podcast and so forth. But here's the deal. I want you to know something. You know about me. Many of you do. Some of you are new listeners and welcome. But many of you know my background, right? I started out many years ago and I was accepted to law school and medical school. Now, what's a boy to do? He's got a decision to make. And I had about 10, 11 months to wait. And there was this thing called chiropractic. And it was like this weird, weird profession out there that I had nothing, very, very little information on. Now, we're going back a whole lot of years, okay? Remember, I've been in this game four decades, and then there was school before that. So... You know, I said, you know, I got to find out what this is all about because anything that is bizarre and, and different for me is something that's interesting and I want to understand more about it. So I went to the National College of Chiropractic in Chicago, actually in the suburbs in a place called Lombard, Illinois. And I was going to get married that year. And that was, you know, to the same lady that I happen to be married to now. And Sue had had migraine headaches from the time she was six years old. And they became progressively so severe. And the medications that she was taking was enough to sink a horse that she would lose anywhere from one to two days a week. And to the point where the neurosurgeons and the neurologists that she was going to at the time, this now this obviously before I started in school, said to her that when the problem got so severe that the medications had no impact any longer, that they would do surgery and what their intention was because they thought it was a spinal cord induced problem that was affecting the spinal fluid. So here's what they wanted to do. They wanted to fuse her entire neck so there was no irritation to the cord or the nerve roots giving her these migraines because they couldn't figure out where it was coming from. So as you might no, and by the way, if you've read my book, uh, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program, Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program, the story's there. But I said to her, I said, this is not okay to her or to me. I said, let's see if this stuff called chiropractic actually has an impact and works effectively on your problem. Well, she started in a clinic in Elgin, Illinois, outside the school, and within 30 days, her migraines were completely gone, not to return again at all in all these years. She stayed under care for about 18 months to correct the structural problems that were there so it could heal, but never again did they return. That's why, my friends, I do what I do today because I didn't have to go anyplace else to help. Now, over the years, all these headaches and migraines and other structural pain and problems and so forth and uh, impairment that people go through and so forth have been amazingly affected by the work that we do. And obviously I went on and I have a, uh, a license in acupuncture and, and uh, two diplomates in, in functional human nutrition and so forth and all of that. But the, the economic cost of this, this one condition. So I want you to know what my background is and know that, you know, we see these types of conditions on a regular basis. The impact of headaches across the board, the impact 
is unbelievable, and that's not even including the spinoff costs of all these things. And we said up to you know close to twenty million billion dollars. You know the domestic and emotional costs. You know, let's talk about people who are suffering these things. You know, the the untreated, the misdiagnosed. You know, family members they can they can go into confusion, the anxiety and depression and frustration, and, and the, all their motivation to do anything is gone. It has been shown that the majority of migraine headaches, migraine-like headaches, and I'm going to show you in a little while that calling something a migraine may not be what it really is. You know, they experience a substantial reduction in their ability to do anything, you know, even interact with people, let alone want to be intimate. You know, there's the old story, you know, uh, honey, not tonight, you know, I got a headache. And well, you know, that's, there's truth underlying all of those things. But how about, you know, recurrent impact on a child's life? You know, school absence of kids. Remember I said Sue had problems from she's six years old, you know, school absences and reduced performance and, you know, uh, they don't want to do anything. They hide. They get depressed. Uh, it's not okay. And then you complicate it, and we just touched upon it a little bit, you know, with the anxiety and depression that goes along with it. It's awful. It's awful situation. So regardless of the age, you know, people who suffer from migraine-like type of headaches, you know, have not only cost problems and in, in financial uh, stabilization in their life, but also in their capacity to interact, their capacity to produce, their capacity to be present in their lives. Subsequently, everything goes out the door. So what are we going to do about it? What can be done? Well, I just told you part of the solution. We're going to talk about what a migraine really is and what it isn't. And these are the things that you need to know. 888 630 888-630-9625. If you've been on all kinds of headaches, you know, had all kinds of headaches and been all kinds of medications for many years. Listen up. You know, this is an opportunity. Ask a question if you would like or this and any other situation that you would like to go over today because that's why I'm doing this. I'm here for you. But, you know, headache sufferers know that they're not present in their lives anymore. You know, it's just not okay. They try to find a way to push through and to do, but it's, you know, they really can't get it done. So, you know, the lack of awareness, really, and what can actually be done, because we're going back now to Fifth Avenue Marketing, take these, this medication, be present with Each medication has its side effect and knocks you out in a different way. So wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great to have your life back? Wouldn't it be great to be able to turn things around? Let me tell you, if you have a headache, if you've had a headache, if you suffered with migraines for any period of time, you know everything that I'm talking about right now is right on point. It's one of those things that you don't want to have to deal with, particularly when there is effective way out of this. And we're going to talk about what, you know, what the effect is. But let me tell you about the distinguishing factors of headaches and migraines. You know, the most common headache is something called muscle contraction headache. And it's where the, you know, the muscles of the back of the head and neck are just tight and they're pulling on the nerves, they're pulling on the spinal cord. And it's often due simply because the bones of your neck or your skull are out of position. Some of them are due because of impact to the skull. You got 22 bones in your head and they, they allow the spinal fluid to pump as you breathe in, as you breathe out, as you breathe in, as you breathe out, they go back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, this pumping mechanism balances and supports and protects the nervous system, you know, but when you have this problem, you know, this, this thing called headaches, we're talking about 50% of the population. Now we already just covered the migraine, but I'm talking about headaches generally 50%. And it's not okay. So we're going to talk about the distinguishing features of, of uh, muscle contraction headaches, or sometimes called tension headaches. We're going to talk about research studies that are being done in Europe, you know, in, the, in the Journal of uh, Physical and Rehabilitative Medicine, and some really interesting articles that were released in 2016, February, so a few months back. And what you actually can do about this. You know, so think about the meds that you've been put on. Think about the things that, that you've been told that I can promise you most of them have been in error. And what can be done. And I'll tell you specifically what the outcomes are of these things. Very personal in my life. Very important to me and my family. You know, it's not something that we see occasionally. Unfortunately, it's something that we see every day of the week. And the fortunate piece is, is that when we do start treatment, 80 to 90% of the time, there's a result. Now, we're coming up to a break, and this is these topics, this type of information is important to you. We want to talk about 
what happens, what the end product is, but more importantly, don't just sit there. Take control of your health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. Don't ever forget that. We're coming up for a break. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. Don't go away. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live in studio. Call me. It's 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you on anything that's on your mind. We're talking about headaches, migraines particularly, and kind of setting the stage for what you can do about them. You know, I said a little earlier in the program that the reason I do what I do today is simply because my wife, Sue, who many of you know and have heard speak, suffered with migraines from the time that she was six years old and nobody could help her. And the medical traditional uh, neurological community wanted to fuse her neck. They wanted to cut her and fuse every bone in her neck. And we said, nope, that's not going to work for us. And so we started in a chiropractic clinic outside of Chicago in Elgin, Illinois. And as I said, 30 days later, her headaches were gone and she stayed under care to correct the structural fault that was involved in all of that. And to this day, you know, over four decades later, she has not had a structural migraine and you know, other than being irritated with me. And, you know, that, that would give anybody a headache, but that's neither here nor there. We'll talk about that a different time. Talking about headaches and what the causes are. Let me distinguish for you, and by the way, call me, 888 Let me distinguish for you headaches and what the differences are. If you really have a migraine, a true migraine, it has an involvement with the vascular bed, the blood circulation to the brain. Opposed to a other, another type of headache, which is a muscle contraction headache or a cluster headache or a tumor formation headache, that has nothing to do with any of that. Those are pressure compression types of headaches. So what is easier to treat? Well, you know, my realm, we don't deal with tumors. We send them out to guys that can do something about that. We may advise, we may cooperatively treat, we may help support the system, but we don't do those things. And but. 90%, 95% of all headaches have to do with either migraine or structural contraction. 80% for sure are just vertebrae, bones in position that are no longer in position, putting pressure on the nerves, and now you've got a problem, right? So they're often called tension headaches, but remember, migraine is a blood supply headache or an inflammatory reaction of the blood vessels. Now, many of you will talk about a migraine being like a stick in your eye going right through the back of your head and it's one-sided and it doesn't affect the other side. Sometimes it switches, it goes back and forth. Why is that you should ask? Funny that you would ask, I'm gonna give you the, the answer for that. So the reason that, that it, it's that is simply because it's affecting not only the neurological and blood supply, but also the acupuncture system is involved in this. At the outer canthus of your eye, right at the outside where the skull hits, you know, your eyeball's in there, just, you, you can touch the outside of your, your, your skull bone, there's a point, and the point is gallbladder one. And when you have a migraine, the gallbladder meridian that goes over the top of your head to the back of your head, and then all the way down, by the way, to your foot and your toes. That area, because of the cause of inflammation from your gallbladder, because you don't eat the things you should, and your body can't get rid of the garbage that you need to get rid of the way it should, because you've been eating junk for all these years and things that are inflamed for a long, long period of time, you end up with this headache, this migraine type of headache. And it begins to affect, because of the pathway of this channel that's sitting there, it's going to affect then the muscles that it goes over or through, causing those muscles then to go into spasm, increasing the inflammatory reaction and so forth. You know, I told you about Sue's headaches, the, the migraines that she's had. So let me tell you what that was about. So here's where true migra migraine comes in. The arteries go directly from the heart to other major vessels and they go up to the head. Well, there's an artery that goes through the bones of your neck. It's called the vertebral artery, vertebrae, bones, artery, okay? So that's where it gets its name. And then it's one up on either side of the vertebrae of the neck. And then they come together at the base of the head and they supply the circulation, if you will, to the back of the brain. And when those vertebrae, bones are out of position, then guess what happens? The blood supply is either 
retarded or enhanced, and then the arteries of the skull can't take it. So to make it work properly and to break the spasm that goes along with it, you have to manually begin to move the vertebrae back into position gently and very specifically over a period of time so that system can heal, so it can make a, you know, a, a response, a difference. You know, the pain that is that comes about from that type of migraine headache is huge. But a lot of you just think because your head feels like there's an ax in the middle of it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a migraine type of headache. It can be because the spinal fluid is not moving the way it's supposed to. Your skull bones are locked. Sometimes your temporal mandibular joint is locked and it's causing spasm. Those types of things, those are structural types of headaches, and they have to be delineated. They have to be specifically looked at and determine the why behind that. And that's the problem that we, in the traditional community, we don't approach it that way. We say, well, you got a headache, here, take this. Take this. Take furanol, take you know, uh, vasodilators, take all these different types of medications, and there's a huge list of them. So it's, you know, it's better to tell you what they do instead of naming the product. Uh, but at the end of the day, they don't fix anything. You know, some of the headaches go away for women simply because of the fact that they're hormone related, but that's a different story, but they're affecting blood supply on top of that. And by the way, the gallbladder and liver, they work together. Guess what breaks hormones down? It's called the gallbladder and the liver. The, the liver breaks it down and the gallbladder gets rid of them. And we're going to talk more about that when we come back. We're coming up to a break and there's several of you that are starting to call in. 888-630-9625, 888 We'll get to your phone calls right after we come back from some very important messages. You know, those people that bring you Dr. Thomas Alive, make sure that you say hey when you go see them. We'll be right back. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome, everybody. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Yep, this is me, Dr. Tom Rosell, live in studio. It's cold outside. You know, it's kind of a shift. It's not really cold. It's just colder than what we've been used to. And it's going to get a little bit colder. It's like I, you know, told uh, a member of my family the other day, it's fall already. You know, if you were with me in western New York State, this would, like, be pleasant. Call me, 888-630-9625, 888-630-9625, talking about headaches. However, Phyllis, thank you for being patient. How can I help you? Uh, yes, sir. I'm a 78-year-old woman in very good health, ex uh, except I can stand outside um, and not touch anything, and I get poison ivy. I have to put a lot of money for all these solutions. I get rid of it. Two weeks later, I could go outside and the same thing happens. And now it's complicating uh, problems that I have with my neck. I've been scheduled. I have arthritis and sclerosis, and I've been looked at, and I have an appointment this week for them to put steroid injections in the neck. And I'm also getting no, them in the spine. No, they will not no. do this if there is a rash. No, no, no. There's other things that I want you to do before you do that, but we'll talk about that in a second. Let me talk about the uh, poison ivy first, okay? Yeah. And then we're going to talk about the steroid injections because no, 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 not unless you've tried all kinds of other things. Okay, here's the deal. So when you get any kind of, uh, you know, reaction like that, whether it's poison ivy, poison oak, right. uh, poison sumac, it's, it's your body's inability to handle the toxoid. Right. And so your body's ability to handle the toxoid is dependent on your liver and your fight-flight system, your adrenal system. And if your, your adrenal system is what produces its own steroid and it kicks it in and anything like this, it modulates it. And the histamine reaction uh, comes from your, primarily from your, uh, your control of it comes from your liver, but also can come from your intestinal system. So you've got three areas that you have to look at. And then you look back. These things generally don't happen, you know, overnight. It's slowly over a period of time. You get an exposure, then you get another exposure and it gets worse and worse. And, and pretty right. soon you go outside and, you know, you pet your dog and you got it. Uh, so here's the deal. I'm going to give you some quick uh, things to, to check out. First, you look at the whole body. So any of our patients that come in, I'm going to look at them from all those systems that we just talked about and find out what's causing the problem, whether it's neurological, whether it's an inflammatory cascade that's going on that continues to just be made worse because of a, a, a toxin irritating, you know, the system like this. You know, if you go back in the medical literature, you know, they started talking about this type of problem years and years and years ago. We're talking about several hundred years back. And there was a way of handling it, and then we forgot about it. And then, you know, allopathic and homeopathic medicine kind of did a split uh, at the, the, the last part of the 19th century. And But let me give you things that work. And so they actually, they're worth trying no matter what because they're not going to hurt you. Homeopathic remedies. Um, 
you know, if you're out... It's a homeopathic physician. Okay. So the things that you need to look at, they have to be specific. The right. the one common uh, substance that is used very, very often is called Rustox or Rustoxoidus. And it's actually made from the poison ivy itself. Right. And it can, you know, can be used uh, quickly and there are different dosages. You can actually desensitize as well. Um, you can, you know, and you do that in the uh, the beginning of the year before spring hits. You know, after everything is really, really cold, and you know, I'm not, you're not my patient. I'm just going to tell you that it can be done, and you can go online and find out. But the the dosage, the the strength is 200 C, and so it's Rustoxoidus 200 C. But you know, the application is very different. Um, it depends on how the the uh, the rashing presents itself. You know, if you have uh, the rashing and it makes your skin hot and you yeah, know, but underneath rash. it's not blistering. Okay. It's just like I've been laying under a lamp too long. Okay, so I would try a combination of Rustox and Brionia, and Brionia is a homeopathic that is used for that as well. Now there's other, you know, you have pustular formations and so forth, uh, right. so forth. Those things are treated with other types of homeopathic uh, applications. Uh, if you if you know if your rash gets worse. Uh, at nighttime and you're like you're scratching all the time and so forth going to one of the uh, constitutional remedies like sulfur but you would use that first again it's a it's a stepping stone but quick applications you're going to use things like brionia and rustoxoidus um, and go from there and you know oh you remember old lye soap that works great to get the toxins off your skin. But, you know, you want to use that with cold water, not not That's warm water, water because right. it's going to uh, open up the, the pores and you're going to uh, draw all the, the toxoid in. But try, and the other thing that works, you know what works, is uh, uh, Clorox. And, really? Yeah, but only Clorox, nothing other than that. It's because Clorox has chlorite. It's a chlorite bleaching agent. And you can apply it on your skin? Yeah, you're going to burn a little bit, but I right. mix it with water. I would do half and half, you know, rub it on, and then, you know, you can do it straight, but immediately get in, uh, wash it off with water very, very quickly. And you should not have hot water, but cooler water? It has to be cool water, otherwise you're going to cause yourself a problem. Uh, what about white vinegar? Is that... Vinegar can help. Vinegar is acetic acid, and that can make a difference as well. But, uh, you know, poison ivy rashes, it's, they once said it's not contagious. Well, here's the truth on it, and this is where I take exception to it. That's why it spreads. It's because it gets into your system. The toxoid starts traveling. You scratch, it's going to break through the system. Right. You scratch the, the toxoid, you know, it's come up to the bubbles, and you scratch someplace else. You just inoculated yourself. And, you know, you're not going to really give it to anybody else, you know, unless you, you know, you roll around with them. You know, you, you yeah, got it. Yeah, you, yeah. you got it from your dog, so it's got to be contagious in some way that way, right? I'm, sure. I'm not saying your dog, but somebody else's dog. And so, but that's the deal. So check it out. Uh, you can find all the things that I'm I'm talking about. You know, you can do your own research if I can help you. Send me a note. I appreciate your call. Hope that helps. And you know, it's no fun. My son was so so sensitive to poison oak. This poor guy. One time, he you know he came up with. You know, a rash that was oh my god! I just you know, we bathed him. And years ago, when my father-in-law passed away, I thought it'd be a nice guy. I came home uh, from uh, Texas or Oklahoma, and Sue was still down there. And I decided that I was going to be a nice guy and do some lawn work. I hate lawn work. I can't stand it. It makes me crazy. And but I was going to be a nice guy and did it. And as a kid, I was never sensitive to poison anything. And I saw some poison ivy in the yard, and I said, eh, no big deal. And I pulled it out with my hands. And, you know, any, by the way, if you go in the woods and you see poison ivy, there's this thing called jewelweed, which is nature's natural remedy. And so, but anyway, uh, that next morning I woke up, I had two little dots on my left index finger. I said, oh, wow. I said, guess what? I guess I got some sensitivity. 24 hours later, I put on 14 pounds of water weight, and I, my stomach from my pubic bone to my chest looked like somebody had, you know, whipped me and beat me. And Sue was, you know, from for the next week, she was basting me like a, a Thanksgiving turkey, you know, with uh, a drying agent and the way that we treated. But anyway, that's what happens. Shirley, thank you for calling. How can I help you? Yes, good, good afternoon, Dr. Roselle. Uh, yes, I have osteoarthritis, and it's this inflammation. I have a lot of soreness in my knees and legs and back of my legs and my arms. What herbs are good for that? And a final question, the high blood pressure. When I take it at home before I go to the doctor, 
it's maybe about 120, 130 over something. And the last time I was there, it was 175 over 96 and 100, and it stayed. But when I got back home, it was normal. Well, that, let's talk about the blood pressure. I'll go backwards. The, the blood pressure could be anything from, you know, you were moving too quickly. You got a whole dose of salt the day before. You were upset with the doctors. Uh, they pushed you in too quickly. Uh, they took your blood pressure the wrong way. The basis of one blood pressure reading means nothing. You know, when we do blood pressure in the office, we do postural blood pressures the first time a patient comes in. We do it sitting, we lay them down, we take it again, then we stand them up immediately, we take it again, because we want to see how the blood pressure shifts. You know, I would be a fool if I diagnosed anybody with hypertension based on their walking off the street, not having any time to rest, and so forth, or the fact that they're sitting out in my waiting room for, you know, 35, 40 minutes waiting for me, getting angry, and, you know, their blood pressure cranks up and so forth. So you have to take all these things into consideration. So we'll set that aside for, for right now. I won't worry about it. If you're taking your blood pressure at the same time every day and it's normal, don't worry about it. It's, uh, you know, if it starts cranking up, then you have to look into it and you have to look at the areas around. Let's talk about arthritis because there may be a link here to what your blood pressure is doing as well. In our last caller as well that I was talking about, and she said that she was going in for spinal injections, and I forgot to say, you know, what I would want her, don't do it until you've tried everything. Here's what happens. You know, if you have a structural problem, whether it's your fingers, your shoulders, your, your elbows, your spine, whatever, and it's diagnosed as arthritis, arthros means joint, itis is inflammation, arthrosis is the same type of thing, but there's no inflammatory reaction at that moment. You have to find out why it's happening. You know, people get banged up. I had patients who were in their 70s and 80s who have great looking spines. I got patients who are in their 30s and 40s that look like they're 130. You know, so where's the difference? It's injury that is present with inflammation, now causes destruction of the joint space, and now you have ongoing deterioration. So you've got to stop the deterioration, you've got to fix the joint space, and you've got to get the body to begin to heal. How do you do that, says the person that I'm talking to. All right, so Shirley, here's the deal. Your intestinal system, as you're putting you know, the food that you eat in your gut, if you're eating things that are not supportive to the body or are going to cause inflammation, what do I talk about? Sugar, sodas, coffee, black teas, fast food, fried foods, alcohol, gluten, additives, preservatives, fast-acting white stuff of any kind, generally grains, uh, those are going to cause the body to be problematic. Now, you have this underlying situation. Stress will do it. Stress causes inflammation. Uh, if we're eating things that have fructose in them, that's going to cause inflammation. If we're you know, uh, under stress continually, that's going to cause inflammation. And so you say, oh, my God, what is a person supposed to do in this world? So you have an injury. You hurt the bones. And you have this inflammation. The joint space is going to break down. So how you start by treating, if you were in my practice, what we would be doing is that we're going to look at you multidimensionally. We're going to look at the why. Is the intestinal system working? Is it irritated? You know, do we have to fix the permeability of the intestinal system in the holes, you know, like little small, you know, like a colander that's got all these small sieves in it because everything's leaking into the body, not fully digested, so you have to fix that. But no herbs for it? No, there's, I'm not going to give you an herb yet, okay? Because oh. there's, I'm, I'm telling you that you got to treat the cause, oh. okay, and not the herbs. Because if I tell you, if I, if I tell you, go take this, then I'm, I'm doing the same thing that medicine is doing, except I'm doing it with a natural product, and, okay. and that's not what we want to do. I mean, sure, there are things that will help, there are things that will make a difference. You know, any of the omega fatty acids, the omega-3, 6, and 9s in proper balance at very high levels will decrease inflammation in the body. You know, uh, things that, uh, that there are herbal pressure, uh, preparations uh, that will bring things down. There's a whole list of them. I don't know your specific conditions, but if you want to fix things yourself to see if it works and you are... You know, you have a sweet tooth or you eat refined foods oh, or you eat, if you, you got to stop that stuff <laughs> because if you don't stop it, you're going to continue deteriorating. You want to make sure that you support your digestive function. Most of us, you know, when we hit 55 to 60 years of age, 65, we have about a third of the digestive function we had when we were 25 and 30. 
And so we have to support that. We have to use good probiotic and prebiotic supports for the intestinal tract and making sure that you're, our, our intestinal system is working. Because if it's not, you're going to get this cascade of inflammation that's going to go through the ceiling. You know, there are many different products that we can use, and we use tons of them. I have 26 different nutritional laboratories that we use in our product because no one company pro uh, provides the same best level of anything. But we start from the basics. We start from, is the structure working the way it's supposed to? Is the patient eating the way they're supposed to? Then we have to pull the toxin out of the system. If you really want to heal the, and not just take this because you got this, there's a very specific way of following that through. Now, having said that, you know, I just, I told you, you can, you know, you can take omega fatty acids, you can take probiotics, you can get digestive enzymes and so forth. And that's the beginning, but get rid of that sweet tooth and get rid of the, the starches and get rid of the inflammatory things. Don't try to go as alkaline as you possibly can. Anything that is green is alkaline and anything that is white, anything that is sugary, anything that is alcohol is acidic. And I mean, there's the list is very heavy on both ends. If nothing more, get a copy of my book. And in the center section, there's a huge chart that tells you what's acid and what's what's alkaline. And do what is the name of your book? It's Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. Okay. Okay. You can go to our website and find it. You can go all over and find it. It's Roselcare.com. That's you know Roselcare.com. R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com. Check it out there. But start with basics. I mean, I can give you things as I said, but I gave you three things to do, but I also gave you something to really... Now, what's alkaline? I mean... Alkaline, acid-base, okay? So things are really acidic, like acid that you can burn things with. Well, you're burning your body. Inflammation equals acid. Inflammation equals acid. So when you're inflamed, your acid level's high. But you've got to find out why the acid level's there. If you're in pain, if you have constant chronic pain, you got to get rid of the pain, not necessarily medically. You got to put the body back into a normal pattern. Listen, Shirley, I hope that helps you. Give me a call, you know, or one of my doctors a call or send me a note at rosellecare.com and I'll get back to you. But that's where you start with this stuff. You don't start by throwing even good nutritional products at it unless you're trying to interrupt a cycle while you're fixing the cycle itself. You have to do it multidimensionally. You've got to fix the structure, you've got to fix the energetics, and then you fix the biochemistry as well, but you've got to change the why. Remember, there's only three things that cause anything. There's either injury, there's biochemical imbalance, things you eat you shouldn't, things you need more of you don't get enough of, electrical fields that you're exposed to, the preservatives, additives, all the junk that's out there, and emotional stress. That's the why. And if you find out the why, you can fix anything. You don't have to suffer with things. You know, our creator gave us the capacity to turn anything around, providing we get rid of the impediment, the impairment, the, you know, dysfunction that occurs. If we get rid of those things, then disease or dis-ease or dysfunction aren't there, right? They just don't happen. They can't. It's an impossibility. Listen, we're coming up to a break. We talked about a lot of things. we got more for you. Unfortunately, you know, it's like too short. We'll be right back. 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live as you do every Sunday, 12 noon Eastern time, and you do the math where you're at. West Coast, three hours locally, you know, Midwest, wherever. And those of you who listen online during the week and pick the program up, you know, we're so happy and lucky and fortunate, you know, to have you as part of our audience. You know what I found out the other day? I didn't realize how many uh, physicians and nurses and so forth listen to this program. And they either listen you know, online, which because we get a lot of messages from you. I want to invite you. And I usually don't do this because you know, this is not a program that's totally directed to you know, professionals. But I want to invite you. We're doing our annual Leadership to Legacy Summit in February. It's the first weekend of February. It's down in Orlando, Florida. And it's uh, for professionals and, you know, doctors and physicians and dentists and their staff and so forth and anybody that's, you know, in the healthcare business. And it's three days. And the way we structure it is we start to go half days. And it's a power packed, 
group of people that are both uh, docs and also people who are not docs that will be presenting. And it's on communication skills. It's on leadership skills. It's on how do we interact with the people that we're, we've dedicated our lives to taking care of, you, our patients, right? How do we do that? You know, so those of you who are in the field, so to speak, go to leadershiptolegacy.com, but you've got to spell it out, the whole thing, leadershiptolegacy.com, and check it out and join us. And it's like super inexpensive. And why do we do this program? Because we have an obligation to our patients to make sure that we are the leaders and we are the ones that are putting them in the direction that they need to. You're going to, um, and we have a special guest uh, this year that's going to present. Uh, many of you know Dal Bigtree. He was the producer, director of Vaxed, the movie, and also Emmy Award uh, producer director for the program Doctors, and he's going to be there, and we're really excited to have him with us. But go check it out, leadership to legacy.com. Got to write out the whole thing, otherwise, you're not going to find it. And love to have you there and, you know, to share with you the skill sets that we all need, regardless of the branch of the healing arts that we're in, so we can maximize and help our patients and, you know, patients, you, all of us, you know, so we get it right. So we do what we're supposed to be doing day in and day out. So my dedication is not just to my practice and to our listenership, but also to all of us, you know, the professionals that that serve everybody that's important, people. And that's why we do what we do. Now, every Sunday, I try to find topics that will make you think and make you stand back. It's like our one listener tonight, she, you know, today, she said that she is going in to have injections in her spine. Please don't do that until you have tried everything else from biochemical and dietary changes to manipulation, manual structural manipulation, to uh, acupuncture, to low energy light laser, all those things combined together, because that's how you get the results, combined together, and to see if you can resolve this thing. You know, many of you know that I had a major accident, actually two of them over the last 14 years, and I had three neurosurgeons tell me that they want to fuse my neck and my low back because I would never be able to work again because I ruptured, you know, four discs in my low back, five degenerative, I've got four in my neck, and that there's nothing I could do except for that. Well, I didn't go to them to have them do anything. I wanted to see what the extent of it was. And those of you know me, as I work every day, do what I want to do, teach all over the place, I still function at very high levels, and I keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Find out what you can get done without surgery first. Surgery, surgical intervention is the last thing. And by the way, I want you to know, in a few weeks down the road, we're going to have a very special guest on Dr. Tom Russell Live, a neurosurgeon that we trust and we respect. Think about that for a while. Good up to the end of the program. Not enough time. Love you all. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step -step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. Mm -hmm. 